So this is a much shorter and less prepared talk. Um, also a subject I'm much more comfortable with just presenting on the fly, hence less slides. Um, so the Gen2 infrastructure team, and I see Theo has not made it here this morning. And I don't think he was drinking that late last night, but we can't blame him since, since, he, since he actually left Gen2 and works for SUSE now. He's on, he's on their infrastructure team instead. Um, he totally ran away. So again, who am I? Um, I've been involved in the infrastructure team from just a few months after I originally joined Gentoo um, because nobody else was actually taking care of the, some of the, the nuances of CVS. And then it was found, oh, you've actually maintained MySQL and had a long history in MySQL. This was already back in 2003. Um, and I'd been dealing with my sequels since the late 90s. And they said, oh, OK, so you can end up maintaining some of this as well. And responsibilities have just snowballed since then. Um, and two, 2007, um, some of the pro <coughs> in some of the political shakeups that happened um, related to trustees our prior leadership of the infrastructure team left as well, and a bunch of us ended up just literally moving up the ranks. Um, then it was Mike Doty and myself on the operational side, and Lance from Oregon State University um, moving into strategic lead of infrastructure, and infrastructure became this strange project that had three people, three people in charge. Um, and nobody quite certain of who to talk to about certain problems. Um, we were just three people in charge on paper, and it didn't really matter on the day-to-day -day things. Um, and over the years, the others have retired and just left me in charge. Um, we have ended up holding a few project elections. Um, I think the last one was two or three years ago. and. They kept saying, why, why are you trying to give somebody else the leadership role? You get to keep it. Um, so I haven't been able to get it, convince anybody else to lead infrastructure. And it's mostly worked out. I'm fine with it for the moment. Um, I may drop some of my other Gen 2 roles time to time, but I'm, I'm staying with infrastructure for now. Um, <coughs> so we'd, the infrastructure team, um, this above is mostly arranged in how much gets done. Um, this is the current people on paper um, that have, have deigned to put their name on the actual project listing. Um, there's two more for um, Blue Ness and Blue Knight um, that are doing some new things that I want to drag them into infrastructure and say, hey, you want to do some things, be responsible and here you can get it done. And thanks to the rest of the infrastructure team. Um, while, I, while all of us were here last time, this year it's just, it's just me. Um, so big things that we've done. Um, soon after, <coughs> was it soon after? Um, no, that year was wrong, I don't know. I should have put that year as 2014, because um, it was last year, I think. So two years ago that we launched the new web page um, with our great April Fool's Day joke that we were going back to CGA. Um, and we had a great theme for the new web page. And then we turned off the theme and, hey, look, all the new content is actually real. And we have our new web page. And we got rid of the historical guide XML system and XSLT transforms that we were using to generate HTML. And a lot of people thanked us for getting rid of that. Um, but it was a huge base of built-up documentation that we had from the years. And now most of that lives on the wiki instead. And the website is a lot smoother and smaller. And unfortunately, not getting as many direct contributions. Um, some of those contributions have moved to the wiki. But I'd say the overall contribution rate is not as high as it used to be for web documentation. And the other big thing that happened is after 16 years on CVS, we are finally in, we finally moved to Git last year. And 
that was not without pain, and there is still ongoing bits of problem. Um, one of the things that was being problematic until I wrote a chunk of code to enf enforce it a few months ago was developers, please set your clocks properly. And I understand that laptops drift, but your laptop being off by four or five hours randomly when you come back from suspend makes terrible commit timestamps. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with your laptop at four, four or five hours. Um, I'm certain it's not the battery at that point. Um, maybe you're just leaving it in the sun too much and your, uh, and your real time clock is just running way too, way too fast because of that. But do something about it. So maybe throw it out the window and get a new laptop that actually can keep time properly. Um, now, the, the commit hook now rejects you um, if you're, I think I've currently got it set to more than 60 seconds. Um, at one point, I had it set down to five seconds, and I got too many complaints from that. So I, I relaxed it to about 60 seconds, I think is what the current value is. And that's been okay. Um, now, one of the, th the problems that was happening with that is when we export the Git content into rsync, um, timestamps matter because timestamps make it down to users. Uh, and some of the time with timestamps, um, particularly for developers that commit later and have their clock wrong, there may not be enough time difference um, between your apparent time and a previous commit. And rsync while ex exporting only has a one second resolution. And if it sees, hey, this file is exactly the same size and the timestamp to the second mark is the same, I'm not going to update this file because checking, check, actually checking checksums is too expensive um, while it goes through the, in, the entire tree. And then the manifest file, which frequently does not change size, doesn't get updated, um, despite the fact one of the checksums in it is now wrong and it doesn't propagate. Um, this is an issue. Um, fix your clocks, it's important. So what's going to come next? Um, Git itself has been mostly successful, I would say, um, on the developer side. Where it hasn't been as great yet is picking up lots of user contributions. And I suspect I'm probably going to be lynched for some of the following remarks. We need to get everybody to move into a review system, including developers, and nobody will commit directly anymore. Some people want to lynch, will want to lynch me for this, while others that have reused review systems are going to say, yes, why weren't we doing this already? <clears throat> and to perhaps alleviate some of that, those developers that have in the past always just written their things and committed to it directly, we need to see about purely automated merging via review system. If you've been around enough years and potentially if we hold um, annual, re annual quiz reviews of your e-build knowledge, um, so that quiz, the, the quiz that we make new developers pass, let's make it an annual thing. Make everybody pass it every year as a requalification test. If you've passed it and your new, your new commits pass some minimal set of checks, we can probably auto-merge you. It doesn't mean that your, your e-build actually does the right thing, but it means at least there's nothing glaringly wrong with it, and you should know what you're doing because we, che we have checked you. Um, and uh, separately from this, we can make possible for all new contributors um, that are not developers to just submit things for review quickly without relying on GitHub um, for those that are concerned about the openness of things. And Integration tests um, with Garrett, perhaps, are not as painful as some of the things on GitHub. And it, we can just get more overall contributions flowing without requiring anybody to particularly be a developer. There are a lot of users that just want to submit a small fix. And it would be great if we can help introduce that. And that mostly covers um, what's happening on, on the Git side. And related to that, um, QA, um, since we have moved to the, the, the QA team has done a fantastic job 
automating more checks. Um, there is an exported view of the Git tree with full, full manifests built out that is only updated if a minimal set of QA checks is presently passed. If they're not passing, it, it doesn't update that tree. Um, and that is looking like what the future of post-review systems is going to, going to be. And a huge thank you to the QA team, uh, Mikhail Goni, for doing a lot of that, where it, it's working. More people need to be using it. Um, and the review systems would end up helping that. <laughs> And beyond that, um, the, gen the infrastructure team, like many others, suffers from a lack of people. Um, there are a lot of teams in Gen 2 that are short of people. Um, the infrastructure team, some parts of it, it has a tendency to burn people out. Um, there, is a, there is a huge backlog of projects that need to be done in infrastructure and never enough people to do them. Um, we've had some fantastic idea ideas that have had unfortunately just sat as ideas to do something about in the future, but we haven't had time or manpower to implement them. And to do this, um, people need to sit down and write a project and then commit to operationally running your project. Um, one of the problems in the early years of Infra is that people would write next cool software and throw it at Infra and then run away. And Infra would be stuck maintaining it for three or four years until it sufficiently broke. Um, until, it, until the project sufficiently broke that Infra didn't have the manpower to continue running your service, and then we turned your service off. And somebody would come and write the next version of your service. Um, the project that ends up showing us the best is the, pro um, the packages site that we have. The very first version of it um, was literally um, server side includes an HTML and was written circa 2002. And it ended up <laughs> having a, a huge security flaw in it that was discovered about 2005 and was one of our infrastructure team's first post-mortem write-ups of a security incident that you could just include the command that you wanted to execute in the URL, and it would run as a shell, and it would run a shell. Fortunately, it was running as nobody, um, but this was terrible at the time. That service was, was promptly turned off, and then um, and several more versions of the packages site were written over the years in various languages. There was one in PHP, there, there was one in um, Cherry Pi as, as the, the Python framework of the day, and now we have a new one that's in Ruby with an Elasticsearch backend, the, the current one, um, that actually for once was written by somebody in the infrastructure team, and they have mostly maintained it. <laughs> infrastructure does have Ruby knowledge. Um, but at some point in the future, I suspect it may also fall into disrepair if people don't operationally take a lot of care of it. Um, maybe the next big thing to Elasticsearch will come around, and Elasticsearch knowledge itself will go away, and that, that may end up being what sinks a project. But maintaining operational knowledge to run a particular piece of software has been difficult in infrastructure. Um, so uh, furthermore, how can we keep people um, that want to write a project running it without forcing them to become an infrastructure member? Um, can we end up requiring them to, to learn enough of automation tools and configuration management tools? Like can say, can you ship a puppet module with your application that Infra can just use? Um, maybe. Um, but it requires that the person writing whatever project it is also has configuration, configuration management knowledge um, and experience, which doesn't always happen. Um, in the newer DevOps world, um, to steal somebody's buzzword that I'm not necessarily always a fan of, and maybe. Um, 
it, it will remain to be seen is forcing every every developer for a project to have configuration management experience going to work out. Um, I like by way of show of hands, how many people actually have experience writing a module for some configuration management system? Yeah, like a tiny fraction of the room. And how many of you write a web project instead? Most, a lot more of you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.